Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, ministers, dear participants, I think we're short uh, of time, so I'm not going to deal in routine statements. I want to thank you all for your uh, participation in this agroecology uh, panel, as for, uh, which is an important issue in the context of this food system. And I'd like to give the floor to the ambassador of Senegal, Mr. Papa Blasek. You have the floor, Your Excellency. The speaker is almost inaudible. In the context of transformation of agroecological systems, the world needs a better calibrated supply. The sound is extremely poor with a lot of feedback. So we need sufficient food, which is satisfactory in quality and which uh, is profitable for producers and which can be borne by the poorest consumers in terms of cost through agroecology. We are talking about uh, feeding the world without destroying it, which for us means the invention of an agricultural civilization predicated on interdependence and uh, a close interaction between man and nature. Clearly, agroecology has to deal with environmental, agro-food and health uh, aspects. Uh, it also has to respect the diversity of situations. The chair, agro-food, the agro-food systems of tomorrow must uh, thrive and produce healthy and varied results. Agroecology can substantially contribute to this process thanks to better st carbon storage, for example, and reduction of soil and water pollution. And to conclude, agroecology is synonymous with intergenerational agricultural uh, solidarity. So that it means ensuring that we're fed without being destroyed. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I think the speaker is completely inaudible. The sound is dreadful. And without further ado, I will give the floor to Dr. Rashad Anko, who will talk to us about the principles of agroecology. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Monsieur Balde. Uh, and it's an honor to be part of this important session on agroecology. I'm a professor at Cornell University, and I've been doing long-term research with smallholder farmers in Malawi and Tanzania on agroecology and its potential uh, for transforming the food system. But I come to you today as one of the co-authors of the uh, Committee for World Food Security high-level panel of experts report on agroecology, which was published in 2019. And as part of that report, we identified drawing both from the scientific literature and from social movements and agroecological practices, the, there are 13 principles that underpin agroecology. And these are both uh, agro uh, in ecological principles, environmental principles, as well as social, political, and economic principles that will guide uh, people and uh, regions to an agroecological transition. And so it's not just one practice or one technique, but a holistic approach that will allow a transition to take place. And at the field level, these principles include uh, recycling of nutrients and energies, uh, using local renewable resources as much as possible, reducing inputs, reducing the use of synthetic and purchased and toxic inputs, uh, ensuring animal health and welfare, and building the soil with organic materials such as compost and manure, as well as uh, at the heart of agroecology, 
ensuring biodiversity, biodiversity of the soil organisms, biodiversity of crops, biodiversity of animals, and really uh, integrating uh, things like agroforestry into the system. So bringing trees into the cropping system in order to have a really ecological uh, transition take place and building synergies between different parts of the system. So um, planting flowers so that you can have pollinators come, uh, in inviting uh, different crops that have synergistic relationships, uh, using the manure from animals and, and building that back into the soil. So these are at the field and farm scale, but as you try to make a transition that goes beyond the farm gate, there's really attention to things like economic diversification such that producers can have value added products that are local and regional and they can get a fair price for those products. So economic diversification is, is a core agroecological principle. And another really important principle is co-creation of knowledge, drawing from local and indigenous knowledge, building on farmer practice and working scientists and farmers working together to to create new knowledge, as well as working with other stakeholders, local businesses, policymakers, to have innovations that are uh, built on the local context. So there's no one cookie cutter set of techniques for agroecology, but it's adapted to the local agroecosystem and the local socio-cultural context. So another important principle of agroecology is uh, that the diet is uh, adjusted for the socio-cultural context and is healthy and diverse. And, and this uh, is social values and diets as a, as a core agroecological principle. And in addition, there is deep attention to building connectivity between producers and consumers through things like community supported agriculture, public procurement of uh, foods, local foods to go into local schools and other institutions, uh, having thriving farmers markets. And then uh, fairness and equity are at the heart of agroecology. One of the principles is to ensure that producers get a fair price for their, for their food that they're producing and that workers within the food system get a, get a fair wage, that there's good working conditions for people working within the food system. And as part of that, there's deep attention to land and natural resource governance, things like access to land, uh, control over seeds, ensuring that there's fairness within the system. And that means that in essence, the last um, uh, principle is participation, essentially democratizing the food system so that people have a say over what kind of food is produced and how it's produced. And, and that these uh, socio-ecological and political uh, principles will help transform not only at the farm scale, but moving beyond to the regional and ultimately the vision of agroecology is a global scale. So we did a review as part of the high level panel of experts report, and we recently published in the journal Global Food Security, we did a review of the evidence for whether agroecological approaches can improve food security and nutrition. And we reviewed over 11,000 articles, we, we selected those that had evidence of impact on food security and nutrition, and we found 78% found evidence of positive impacts on food security and nutrition. And importantly, those that were more complex systems that drew on farmer to farmer teaching, on uh, attention to social equity, such as gender dimensions uh, and other of these social and economic and political principles were more likely to have positive food security and nutrition outcomes. So just to summarize, this is a holistic approach to the food system that examines the environmental, social and health dimensions and political dimensions of the food system. It's not just focused on productivity and it has a long-term vision. Uh, the minister from Senegal mentioned the intergenerational attention that, that this brings in. And so it, it, it is building a food system for the future. And in doing so, it's using 
participatory methods that bring in knowledge from different sources and making practices that are context specific, adapted to the local agroecosystem and the local sociocultural context. So there's diversity in knowledge systems as well as biodiversity, which is really essential. And finally, this attention to equity and justice, fairness and democratic governance of the food system is really crucial access to land, the right to save seed, these are really crucial dimensions and underpinning, these are underpinning principles uh, that will help uh, facilitate a, a transition, an agroecological transition. So thank you very much. And I look forward to hearing the rest of the session. Merci beaucoup, professeur, pour cette étude thank you very much indeed. Professor, uh, 11,000 articles, that's quite a track record. And uh, of course, uh, we would fully subscribe to the principles that you've shared with us. No, I can't see the participants, unfortunately. I've got the full screen, but I can't see the other participants. Now, I'd like to introduce my counterpart, the French agriculture minister, Julien de Normandie. We all know, of course, that France is very committed to agroecology in France as well as throughout the world. So it's a real pleasure for us to be able to listen to Mr. Julien de Normandie. You have the floor, minister. Thank you very much indeed, President, colleagues, participants. It is a real honor for me to be able to represent France and to take part in this high level panel discussion on, as you have already said, President, a subject which is close to France's heart, namely the agroecological transition. Indeed, France has been involved in the transition of its food systems for a number of years now. And we here see agroecology as a lever for responding simultaneously to the challenges of food and nutrition security and the preservation of resources, but also to economic durability against the backdrop of climate change. And of course, we all have to face up to the challenge of climate change, which shows us on a daily basis that the time for waiting is over. Now we must act. We must draw the world's attention to the value of carbon, which is stored in farmland. This is absolutely crucial. And the four per 1,000 initiative attests to that. And it's something that France is very much behind. Agroecology in France is an important plank of our policy and one aspect of it is relocating or reshoring the production of vegetable protein into our country. This is one of the main priorities of our president, Emmanuel Macron, and this is something we are going about in a determined fashion. We are also looking to diversify our crop rotation to plant hedgerows as well as preserving permanent grassland. Now, when it comes to our international policies, again, as you have pointed out, President, we are doing what we can to try and make people better understand as well as publicize the value of agroecology and I very much welcome in this regard the recent adoption of recommendations by the Committee on Food Security, a basis on which we can build. Similarly, France has also been investigate, investing in research in order to promote the exchange of 
experiences. And that is why, as part of our international cooperation, the president of the Republic, as well as the heads of government of countries of the Sahel, launched on the occasion of the One Planet Summit the Great Green Wall Initiative, again, which the president just mentioned. The Great Green Wall Accelerator Initiative is designed to breathe new political life into this undertaking. It is also all about trying to catalyze joint initiatives to protect as well as to restore ecosystems, increasing agricultural productivity using agroecological approaches, at the same time preserving the unique biodiversity of this region and building economic resilience in the region in the face of climate disruption. We, ladies and gentlemen, have to move on from national and international efforts to a higher level. And that is why we very much welcome this framework of the food security systems, because we cannot have food security without the transition to agroecology. And this is a battle we must wage at international level, because we have open and free trade. And if only a handful of countries do embark on the agroecological transition, they would be far weaker than if other countries also join in the process. And that is why I very much welcome this initiative. And you know that France stands behind this initiative. And we would like to see a coalition of stakeholders who are committed to the development of agroecology. This is, of course, a major challenge, and this is one of the messages that we should be sending out on the occasion of the upcoming summit in September. Thank you very much indeed, Minister, for that extremely clear presentation and also for drawing our attention to the sub-regional initiative to fight against desertification in the Sahel. Now we will hear from Bise Kuma. We will hear a statement uh, on the situation in Bangladesh. Mr. Kuma, you have the floor. Thank you, Thank you. Excellency. Excellencies, distinguished panelists, and distinguished participants, greetings from India. I am grateful to the United Nations for hosting the session on agroecology for food system transformation. I think it's a great effort on part of many of you here to have made this happen. And so I'm grateful to all of you for having ensured that a session like this is being held. I'm privileged to speak in this forum on behalf of 750,000 farmers and farm workers of the state of Andhra Pradesh, India. These are our heroes. They are making the transition to natural farming. I'm also grateful to all the farmers in India and in other countries who are making this transformation. Actually, this should have been the dominant mode of production given the benefits to the people and the planet. And the benefits are too numerous, I think Rachel has done a great job in describing these benefits. And I'm speaking today, not from theory, but from the experience of uh, leading this program for the last six years in our state. We started this in 2016 in 700 villages with 40,000 farmers, men and women farmers. And in 2020 21, five years later, our footprint had increased to 3,000 villages, and our enrollment, as I mentioned, is 750,000 farmers and farm workers. This represents 10% of the state's farmers and farm workers. So I believe we are at a tipping point. But kindly note this is a purely voluntary movement encouraged by the government, by the civil society. And each farm family takes three to five years to make complete transformation. But they start realizing the benefits 
from year one itself. Reduced costs, reduced risks, similar yields as conventional farming, and better health benefits from year one itself. But these benefits increase each year as farmers become more knowledgeable and the soil health improves. This is knowledge intensive agriculture and not input intensive agriculture, and that's a major difference. So in Andhra Pradesh, we have been able to scale up by 18 times in five years. And this has been possible because of the combination of the following five factors. Uh, government support to natural farming. So government provide, is providing resources, is providing legitimacy and advocacy. The Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Jagan Mohan Reddy, is the biggest champion of natural farming. Then the social capital of women. We have women self-help groups and federations, and this has been about 20 years in making. Around 90% of women in rural areas are organized into collectives. So this incredible social capital nurtured over 20 years is the most important grassroots force for this transformation. The third element, which is extremely critical, is farmer to farmer knowledge dissemination, champion farmers, who are the best practitioners are selected as trainers. And as I mentioned, this is a knowledge intensive process. And the fourth very important factor is this involves very intensive handholding because we are not offering any financial incentives for making the transition. So this transformation is three to five years for an individual farmer but we believe that whole village must be transformed. So this takes five to eight years. So the government, the civil society organizations, the women social capital come together to enable this transformation to happen. So this is that handholding support, which is a very vital element of this transformation. And finally, partnerships with research organizations, with philanthropies, with multilateral organizations, with civil society organizations. And the sixth point I want to say is knowledge creation of a different kind by farmers and scientists working together. This knowledge creation is also an iterative process. I have no doubt that agroecology is perhaps the only agency that mankind has to avert the looming climate apocalypse. It is the best and the fastest way of preventing this climate catastrophe. So let us join hands to scaling up agroecology. We cannot lose any time. This should have been done 20 years ago. And our youth and our children's hopes are tied up with what we all of us do today. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Merci beaucoup, Mr. Kumar. Thank you very much, Mr. Kumar. Now, let me just remind you that we've got to try and manage uh, the time here. So I'd be grateful you could all take account of that. Now, Mr. Kumar was talking about practical experiences, and I think that's precisely what we need. We need to share models of practical experience if we want to make progress. Without further ado, let me introduce my colleague, His Excellency Antonio Francisco Assis, Minister of Agriculture of Angola. So, over to Thank you, Mr. Chair, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of His Excellency Minister Antonio Francisco Assis, Minister of Agriculture, allow me to thank you, Chair, for the invitation to intervene in this important initiative for food system and to confirm Angola's commitment to continue with the dialogue to respond to the challenge of food and nutritional security with agroecology and regenerative agriculture as an instrument to fight anger and poverty. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to appreciate and praise the contribution of the group of Friends of Agroecology, FAO and the United Nations for endorsing. We work with the potential that agroecology will develop with multi-sectorial collaboration and cooperation program, especially to strengthen the innovation, entrepreneurship and integrate programs which promote adaptation to the risks that the agroecology can reduce to make food system more resilient. Angola suffers cyclical episodes of climate crisis, which disrupt economic growth and aggravate food security. And we are aware that multi-sector programs focused on the promotion of agroecology will have an impact on the improvement of a food system, considering communities as elements that take part in this important movement for change. Agriculture can quickly develop if family farming can promote agroecological initiatives for better nutrition and nourishment. I would like to conclude by congratulating this initiative and proposing that recommendation of the dialogues may be taken into consideration at the next Food System Summit in September. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Je vous remercie, Madame la Représentante du Ministre. Thank you very much indeed. To the representative of the Minister from Angola, thank you very much indeed for your statement. And now, right away, let me give the floor to Dr. Miguel Garcia La Linda, His Excellency, Ambassador from Mexico. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, for your kind words. And uh, if you allow me, I will revert to my native uh, language, Spanish. Uh, muchas gracias uh, a todos por la gentil invitación a participar. Kind of to participate in this event. México quiere reiterar Mexico su compromiso en buscar nuevas formas de transformar los sistemas agroalimentarios. Ways and means of transforming agrofood systems. So uh, we attach great importance to the question of agroecology and we acknowledge that in recent years, the way in which uh, we've produced food has led to serious deterioration in the biodiversity situation, climate, and especially our health. And with this in mind, Mexico wishes to carry out a transformative process begun by the, uh, the new president and new government of Mexico attach great importance to agroecology uh, such that we have a special program to transform, in most cases, the way in which we produce food. And this strategy is a complex strategy spanning development of public policy, uh, capacity uh, strengthening, and the uh, development of uh, technical support. Mexico pledges to support this endeavor. We view it as the crucial process of transformation for the future of food systems. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for giving us the floor. I want to reiterate the commitment of Mexico to this important initiative. We are one very biodiverse and very diverse country culturally. We have a strong tradition on ecological practices. La Milpa and El Traspatio, which is the backyard gardens, are two of the main examples of how this um, uh, transformation can take place and has been successful through history. Uh, muchas gracias. Reciban de parte de México y su delegación from Mexico and from this delegation, warm welcomes and welcome, welcome and uh, great solidarity with all of those people who are suffering from the consequences of COVID. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for 
reporting on the strategies developed in Mexico to promote agroecology. Thank you very much for your contribution. I'd now like to give the floor to my colleague, the Minister of Sri Lanka, His Excellency the speaker has garbled the name and apologizes for um, making a mess of the name, but it's with great pleasure that I give you the floor. Is he, is he connected? Excellencies. We can hear you now. Please yeah, excel uh, yeah Excellencies. Uh, uh, my colleague uh, who was from Sri Lanka was to uh, uh, make the statement on behalf of the uh, Honorable Minister, but he's also not contactable. Uh, may I make statement uh, on behalf of our minister? I am a, a CDA uh, and a acting permanent representative uh, based in Rome. Oui, très bien, vous pouvez. May I continue? Oui, oui allez-y, allez-y. Yeah. Excellencies, distinguished participants from Mumbai States, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, uh, we would like to thank on uh, pas très bien, par the organizers of these sessions and inviting Sri Lanka to participate for the session. Sri Lanka is an island nation, experienced tropical monsoon climate. Sri Lanka has a rich agroecological diversity. My country comprised of 46, 46 agroecological regions where the soil type, terrain, rainfall, and biodiversity are varied, varied from one to another. This itself is a blessing for Sri Lankan agriculture to have a diverse food system, uh, which is well suited to different agroecological settings. With the blessings of the Chief President of Sri Lanka, we are transforming our food system from inorganic to ecological organic agriculture, applying agroecological principles to restore degrade, degraded land and improve the soil health while assuring healthy food system for our citizens. In this endeavor, the biodiversity in agroecological zones plays a major role in supplying organic inputs and pest and disease control mechanism. Further, Sri Lanka has initiated actions to ease, ease out market and institutional constraints, including market failures, also to reconfigure research and development of agriculture to support ecological agriculture and to develop and deploy holistic uh, metrics of agricultural and food system performance to track and guide transformation. Sri Lanka is a developing uh, agricultural information system for real time crop monitoring and to protect the farmers for any crop damages through well-coordinated crop insurance system. By all these initiatives, we hope Sri Lanka can match towards a vibrant, eco-friendly and more resilient and sustainable food system. Therefore, Sri Lanka support the idea of agroecological agri agri and uh, regenerative agriculture approaches as a key to transform food systems towards healthy, resilient, equitable, and sustainable food system. Thank you. Micro, oui, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Excellence, euh, pour l'expérience Sri Lankaise. Maintenant, je vais. C'est un plaisir pour moi de donner la parole à Esther Penunia pour son intervention. Vous avez la parole, Esther.
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Our member farmer organization have practiced agroecology since 1990s through projects that allow us to provide technical assistance and direct funding to farmers, supported by various institutions currently with EU, SDC, IFAD, FAO, and GAPSP. At the global level, agroecology has been a movement largely propelled by civil society and farmers producers organizations. And this movement is very dynamic and has flowed through peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, farmer-to-farmer -farmer extension at local, national, regional, and global levels, as well as support from allied development partners. However, agroecology is still to be massively supported through policies and programs by government, as well as actions by other sectors, such as donor governments, business, scientists, and consumers. Agriculture schools need to mainstream agroecology in their curricula. Scientists need to work with more participatory and in situ researches on integrated family farming agriculture. Governments need to align policies and increase funding for agroecology and promote incentives to agroecology, such as technical assistance, capacity building, support to farmer to farmer extension through in-situ agroecology schools, providing links to markets, supporting participatory guarantee systems, and payment for environmental services such as watershed management. In many Asian countries, current incentives still favor the chemical intensive and monocropping. We are hopeful that this summit will strengthen this movement through the coming together of champions of agroecology among member states, civil society, farmers and producer organizations, business and scientists who will dedicate resources, time and energy to implement agroecology on a massive and global scale. Thank you and back to you, Chair. Merci beaucoup, Esther. Je rappelle que Esther est le président d'une association de producteurs et qui sont définitivement orientés vers l'agroécologie. Euh, merci beaucoup. Et donc, euh, c'est un plaisir pour moi de donner maintenant la parole à M. Emile Prison, qui est Colline Agrologie Solution Cluster. M. Prison, vous avez la parole. Merci, M. Euh, le Président. Euh, c'est un plaisir de participer aujourd'hui. Euh, je parlerai en anglais. On behalf of the co-leads of the Solution Cluster on Agroecology, Fergus Sinclair and Esther Penunia, I am pleased to present the proposed coalition on agroecology. This has emerged from the deliberations of a working group drawn from representatives of over 80 game-changing solutions proposed to the summit through all five action tracks and discussions led by the Friends of Agroecology Group. The coalition aims at transforming our food systems in a way that will deliver simultaneously on economic, environmental, climate, nutrition, health, and social objectives. In other words, on the sustainable development goals in a holistic, integrated manner. It starts from this uh, conviction that only increasing the extent and efficiency of the currently dominant model of high input agriculture will not be sufficient to address the global challenges we face and that there is an urgent need for bold action to transform food systems. The transformation require, required involves a paradigm shift towards diversified agroecological systems guided by the 13 principles of agroecology as defined by the high-level panel of experts on food security and nutrition, as you heard from Ms. Besnecare. These systems intensify in relation to knowledge and often labor rather than capital. And they demand co-innovation amongst farmers, scientists, and other actors in the food system to develop locally adapted solutions. They generate new technologies that are in harmony with nature, 
incorporating all technological advances in agriculture and food science that are compatible with the 13 principles. The coalition that is being formed builds on many successful examples, demonstrating the real potential of agroecology, some of which have been mentioned in this session. What is needed now is to redirect investments towards this agroecological transformation. We invite countries and organizations that want to engage in this agroecological transformation to join this coalition and implement an ambitious agenda before it is too late. Time to act boldly is now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merci beaucoup. Je ne doute pas que votre appel sera entendu, Monsieur Emile Prison, pour rejoindre cette coalition et l'idée d'agroécologie. Maintenant, je me tourne vers deux autres personnes qui vont parler ensemble. Il s'agit de Joao Campari et de Sandrine Dixon pour leurs commentaires sur le Lead Action Track 3 and 5. Vous avez la parole, M. Campari. Hello? Come in because you need. Oh. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look, I couldn't be happier uh, with the session uh, in the main program in the summit. I congratulate really the leadership of the member states in this call for leveraging this effort in creating a coalition specifically for leveraging the efforts towards agroecology. I also congratulate and I'm particularly grateful to Esther Penunia, Emil Frissen and Fergus Sinclair for leading the solution cluster that is fast evolving into a center of gravity actually that will take the um, agroecology movement towards uh, uh, the sustainable development, take the help take the summit towards the sustainable uh, development goals. Agroecology serves in fact as an anchor for all five action tracks of the UN Food System Summit. And this happens because agroecology delivers value to the improvement of uh, human health, is nature positive in essence, strengthens livelihoods, and increases the resilience to vulnerability shocks and stresses. It covers all action tracks of the Food System Summit. And it offers us a unique opportunity uh, to farm with biodiversity and not against it. So I'm really pleased to be here and uh, delighted that this coalition is forming. And let me pass the word now to my uh, good colleague, Sandrine, for her remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Merci. Et uh, un grand merci aux excellences qui sont avec nous aujourd'hui. Thank you very much to all the excellencies that have joined us today and exactly as Joao Campari indicated, my co-partner in crime from the action tracks and with all the other action tracks, we so welcome this initiative. This is the initiative that is going to be the anchor for systemic and holistic approach to food. It is the initiative that will place a value on food as a public good, a human right in commons, not only as a commodity. We have to ensure in looking at agroecology as the ticket to universal, universal access to food, this is key to local production for local consumption, to ensuring that we have healthy food for healthy people and planet. So the shift and the backing that we are receiving from so many of you at the ministerial level and all stakeholders from across the globe is absolutely key. And we thank you as leaders for heeding this call. But what is next? We need to think about our priorities. We need to think about why agroecology so far has not been scaled to the level that it needs to be. We need to take agroecology to the next level. We need to set an ambitious goal that is meeting the daunting challenge. 25% of all arable lands should be cultivated with agroecology or regenerative modes of production by 2030. One quarter of total livestock raised should be done in open rangelands by 2030. We heard this morning from Johan Rockström once again that we cannot go beyond the planetary boundaries and that this is a, de a decade of action. 
So what the call to all of you and to all of us is, let's step up to the plate, let's scale up, let's replicate, let's shift from industrial, purely industrial systems to real agroecology and regenerative systems. Bold policies, redirected subsidies and legal frameworks, prioritizing the right to food and the right to water over the profit and maximization. So thank you again for enabling this incredible coalition and you can definitely count on the action tracks and also myself as co-chair of the club of rome who's been saying for the last 50 years there is a limit to growth but here is an incredible no, not speaker, correct, to I, I cannot hear you now voilà c'est fini vous m'entendez voilà merci beaucoup sandrine merci à vous donc uh, now we are going to give the floor to the last before the concluding remark, and it is a great pleasure for me to give the floor to Musonda Mumba for his remark by Musonda Mumba. So you have the floor, Musonda. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. It's such an honor to be a part of this discussion. Um, I'm Musonda Mumba with the UNDP Rome Center for Sustainable Development. I mean, listening in to all of these conversations, it really just brings to the fore the importance of SDG 17, which in my mind, and if I can be a little provocative, I think should even be the SDG 1, the power of collaboration and partnerships. We cannot afford not to collaborate. If the pandemic has shown us something that is even more important now is how we partner, how we collaborate differently. And I'm so glad that Sandrine touched on the element of the decade of action. Yes, we have entered a decade of action, but we're also in the UN decade on ecosystem restoration. Our food systems have been destructive. They've been problematic. And we've seen how this has manifested just in dealing with the pandemic with communities that are not having healthy and nutritious food systems. How do we restore this dynamic around food systems for people and planet. I think this is a very important issue. And lastly, but not the least, at UNDP, we're obviously very much cognizant that what this pandemic has done is really bring the poverty levels back to 2008 kind of poverty levels. So how do we then shift the dial and rethink? And I think food systems are very central that also doing that, the green jobs that they'll bring, but healthy systems. And I was really glad to listen in from His Excellency from India, just really talking about that social capital of women and youth. Um, we have to really place the centrality and the importance of the gender dynamic around food systems. And in closing, I just want to say, we cannot afford to go back to that world that was problematic. What we need to do is how do we amplify, scale up, great to see the scientists here in this room and being a part of these discussions, great to see the policymakers here, great to see different actors and doers across the board. We have to co-create, we have to co-design. I wish you all the best with the deliberations in this coming few days. Thank you very much and over. Merci beaucoup. Nous sommes maintenant au terme de de notre session. Merci beaucoup, Moussonda. Euh, je pense que nous avons eu une très belle session avec euh, des interventions très, très pertinentes. Je voudrais juste maintenant faire quelques remarques pour clôturer la session. Euh, mesdames, Messieurs, chers collègues, chers participants, euh, vos contributions à nos essences dans le cadre de ce panel ont été enrichissantes et diversifiées. Je vous en remercie. Je suis désolé qu'il n'y ait plus de traduction, d'interprète, mais on pourra éventuellement mettre une copie en anglais de cette intervention. Euh, sauf, sans être exhaustif, je voudrais en relever quelques messages clés. L'agroécologie est une partie intégrante des stratégies pertinentes pour transformer les systèmes alimentaires et les rendre mieux opérants. Mieux, elle demeure l'approche la plus intégrée permettant d'allier les exigences de préservation de la biodiversité, de garantie du profit pour les producteurs, notamment les petits producteurs des pays en développement et de résilience sociale des pays les plus vulnérables de la planète, notamment en Afrique de l'Ouest et au Sahel. Nous avons parlé bien sûr tout à l'heure de la grande mirage verte. L'agroécologie repose sur de solides références scientifiques 
qui prouve quelle est la solution pour une agriculture respectueuse de l'environnement et soucieuse de la question de la sécurité alimentaire et nutritionnelle, ainsi que des régimes alimentaires sains et durables. Euh, fort heureusement, il existe des initiatives fortes qu'il faut encourager et soutenir dans ce domaine. On peut en citer, entre autres, l'initiative Scaling Up de euh, agroécologie de la FAO, les recommandations politiques sur l'agroécologie récemment adoptées par le Comité de la sécurité alimentaire mondiale, CSA, sur lesquelles le Sénégal et d'autres pays ont travaillé avec abnégation. Tenant compte de ce qui précède, de plus en plus de pays et d'organisations prennent conscience du potentiel de l'agroécologie pour faire face aux défis qui nous interpellent sur les plans économiques, social et environnemental. C'est bien pour toutes ces raisons que je lance au nom de son Excellence, le président Macky Sall, un appel solennel à l'action pour faire face aux défis de la sécurité alimentaire. L'urgence des défis climatiques, de nutrition et de santé ne permet plus de nous satisfaire de demi-mesures. La formation d'une coalition ambitieuse pour la transformation de nos systèmes alimentaires basés sur l'agroécologie et ces 13 principes, nous avons écouté avec beaucoup d'attention euh, les explications du professeur euh, qui a développé ce thème, nous offre une opportunité unique de joindre nos forces pour ouvrir une nouvelle page dans la solidarité et la coopération internationale pour sortir les millions de personnes de la pauvreté et de l'insécurité alimentaire et réaliser ainsi les ODD 1.0 et le, les ODD 1.0 et les ODD 2 pauvreté zéro. Aussi, voudrais-je inviter instamment tous les pays et les organisations qui partagent ces principes à s'approprier la déclaration en préparation qui sera présentée au cours de cette rencontre pour rejoindre ainsi dans les meilleurs délais, cette importante coalition sur l'agroécologie. Je vous remercie tous de votre participation et surtout de votre aimable attention. Voilà, la séance est levée, je vous remercie.